Hi everyone, it's Gabrielle here. Um, I'm going to show you today the technique that I've been playing with to uh, make pictures in my jelly print using foam shapes. So you can see here that I've got a piece of just really basic craft foam that you get in a $2 shop, a cheap shop. Um, it's usually like craft foam for kids. You get these really thin sheets and I've just, I tend to draw a piece, draw my design on a piece of paper, then transfer it to the foam and cut it out with scissors. It's really easy to cut. Then to actually get any design inside the foam, you, you can use a pencil or a really, or a ballpoint pen, anything that will make an indentation. And so you can see here, I'm just going in and marking the eyes, the mouth, um, going around the shell for this turtle um, to give him, and the things that I draw in that space will end up being uh, the designs that, that print when he's turned over. So it's kind of a bit like making a stamp, really. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility to put the designs that you like. So there he is. And I'm just showing you also some leaves that I'm using to print with. So getting the jelly print plate out, um, I tend to put it on a piece of paper so I can then line it up when I'm printing. And I've been using these just Matisse structure paints. I found that they're quite good. I've tried using the kind of lighter ones, but these ones seem to hold a print very well. I put the paint up the top this time. Sometimes I put it down the side, uh, just brayering it on. Um, the structure paints take a bit of effort to actually get um, to get them really spread across the palette. They're not as easy as some of the other ones, but once they're there, they seem to, to hold the print really well. Um, and I put a bit of green over the top after the Payne's Grey and I think it was Prussian Blue that I used there. And that was just a cheaper green, um, just a you know $2 shop green to add a bit more colour and brayering it off. So you want a reasonable layer. And there I go putting it on the wrong side. <laughs> so you actually need to put it obviously with the side with the, the marks down. Um, so I was just a bit distracted there. Press it down, try not to get it all over your fingers. Um, and then I'm using the bits of the uh, cypress sort of palm, the way it is, um, fir tree, and pressing them in all around. So just making a design that I, I thought that they looked a bit like seaweed, a bit like a, a sort of sea fan, corally sort of stuff. And so I'm using just an acrylic block there also to print it, press it down to try not to get it all over my fingers. But I tend to just end up using my fingers anyway. You can see just really pressing it down. You're just wanting to get a nice, clear, crisp image in the in the in the um, base paint. Just using a sponge there over a stencil, leaving the the leaves in place. Um, and then I also I love this bubble stencil. Um, so also just printing over the top. If you leave the foam there, it means you can get the stencil quite close, but you don't get it into the shape, which is a good reason to do it this way. And bubble wrap always good. And then once you've got all the things that you want to press in, you peel them off very carefully. Try not to get fingerprints on the plate. You can touch up any areas that you think might need a bit more colour. And I've just, sometimes you use a sea sponge to add a bit of extra texture. Um, and then peeling my turtle off. Usually do a last little press in, hope that he's actually lifted off most of the white. Unfortunately, you can't see so well here because the light is a bit reflective, um, but he has made a quite a good impression there. And I'd sometimes just use a dry paintbrush if there's bits where I just want to use a bit, get a bit more white, um, you know, where it's just a bit too dark. So I can just touch it up and get a little, remove some of that blue. So here what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of the acrylic paint out and I'm going to sponge some on in areas to give it a bit of color. So I've waited till the blue's dried and now I'm just wanting to go in and, and maybe give a bit of color in the corals. Just, I was experimenting with this way of putting color where I wanted it rather than brayering it on, which I think it gives it's a, quite a nice look and you can do it quite softly. I've actually got a bit of water, so the sponge is a bit damp when I've put it on. So you can see that that gives it, I'm just trying to build up a little bit of, sort of very light wash of color um, and, and different colors there. That pink is a bit, bubblegum bright so I was just trying to tone it down a bit and you can see I'm just going over each of those things trying to use the same color in a lot of locations to, to try and tie it all together 
And then I did actually go in and, and add some colour to the turtle as well, which was more of a, like a bronze and a, I think a yellowy bronze and green. Cool. And when you've got it all to the, you know, you've got enough colour that you like, uh, then it's time to let that dry. It's really important that everything dries before you put the final layer on. And so then we're ready. I think I'm adding a little bit more purple here and a little bit more pink. I think this is where I overdid it a bit with a bit too much colour. I got a bit carried away. Yeah, I didn't like quite so much red, but you know, it's all trial and error, which is the, the fun of this. And then what I'm using here, so I'm just squeezing across, I use this really cheap acrylic white. I found one that you get from Kmart. Um, it's just like Anko, it's $2 a tube. It actually works the best of any of the paints that I've tried. Um, so this one is actually, I think a different plate because the first one I realized that I wasn't filming <laughs> when I actually did that final bit, my camera had stopped filming. So I just did another one. So they're very similar but you, you might spot a few differences. When you're rolling on the white, it's really important to make it really, really thin. Um, so you can see it's sort of almost translucent there. You can see the turtle a bit through it. And then I'm just rubbing the paper on. Here I've used a, a kind of buff colored card, often just use white. Um, and obviously the color of the card will affect the final print. It will show through a bit. And here's the fun. I love this moment. I love the moment of peeling off and especially when it all comes off and it doesn't stick. And I found that that really cheap white tends to work really well for that. So there it is. You can see that when I've added a bit of extra color in the white, so I've put white, but I also put some bronze and some green, that some of those have created a bit more of a stripe there. Whereas the other one I did, um, it's more just the spongy colors that are coming through with white over the top. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. Okay, thanks.